Praise the Lord. Um, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? It's good to worship God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> let's pray first before we go to my message uh, this morning. Lord, we are so grateful that in you we have joy. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you, to worship you. Because really, Lord, <clears throat> you have done so much for us. And you deserve our worship. You deserve our service. So, Father God, as we dig deep into your word now, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be the one who will speak to us. Bless every word that I speak because my own words doesn't mean anything. But your words means everything. And it is life. So I pray, oh God, for an open ears to hear and a heart to receive your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let me uh, start with... Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 11. And this is Paul encouraging not only the Romans, but also the Christian of today. That's for us. He said, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Those words is keep your spiritual fervor. In other words, keep, your, keep yourselves on fire, spiritually speaking. On fire, hot, not cold. Amen. Serving the Lord. So I'm going to talk about today about serving the Lord. Is that serving the Lord is one of the ways that we can grow spiritually and keep our spiritual Fervor. So, we're going to answer the question, what does the serving the Lord mean? And how does it cause the spiritual growth? From the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament, you will find words that encourage, challenge, or admonish to serve, to, admonish it says to serve, the Lord, just like one in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And this is a very familiar uh, verse in Scripture. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living, but for me and my house we will serve the Lord. First Samuel verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 24. It says this, But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully and with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. And then going to the New Testament, um, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So this and many more verses throughout the Bible, we can find that Really, it encourages us to serve the Lord. So today we're going to look at those verses and break them down and what it means to serve the Lord and why we should serve the Lord. But first of all, I'd like to clear the confusion about serving the Lord. Normally when people say, I am serving the Lord, or when you ask them, how's your spiritual life? especially when you haven't seen that person for a while and you say hi to them and you ask them, how's your spiritual life? Most of the time, 
people will say, well, praise God, we are still serving the Lord. But what do we mean by that? What really people, excuse me, what they really mean is that, most likely what they really mean is that when they say we are still serving the Lord, meaning they are, they're saying that we are still going to church. Okay, we are still attending church. That's what really people mean when they say we are still serving the Lord. But what is the meaning of the word serve? Okay, because the truth is that when you come to church, when we show up to church, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are serving the Lord. You probably mean you come to worship. It probably means that you come to listen to the word of God. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you are serving the Lord. Now, let's look at the meaning of the word serve in the Bible. In the Bible, you will find the word serve, whether, whether it's in Hebrew or in Greek. It means the same thing. Okay? The Hebrew word is abad. And the Greek word, there are two words that are used in, in the scriptures when it says serving the Lord. The first one is jaconio, but from where we get the word deacons. The second one is duluo, which means, again, the same thing. Okay? These three words, whether it's in Hebrew or in Greek, it means the same thing. It means to work, to labor, or to become slave or servant to somebody. So, when we say again, I serve the Lord, it means it includes work, labor, or to become a slave. So if I ask you, with the meaning of these words, how many of us are serving the Lord? Well, you do not have to <laughs> raise your hands, okay? You don't have to raise your hands. Okay, again, given the meaning of the word, that means to work, to labor, that in involves physical labor, or to become a slave, or to become a servant. So given the meaning of this word, I want you to think, are we really serving the Lord the way it is intended to be? Because again, so many times when people say, I am serving the Lord, it basically means that I go to church. That's not serving the Lord. Okay? Because again, serving the Lord or serve means to do labor, to work, to, to become somebody's um, servant or slave. So, now let's go to why is it important to serve God? Okay, having that in mind, what it means to serve the Lord. Why is it important to serve God? Now, Joshua gave us two reasons. So let's go back to Joshua chapter 24. Again, in verse 15, Joshua challenged the people this. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, this is Joshua's challenge to the Israelites during his farewell speech. Okay, first of all, he reminded, go to chapter, uh, chapter 24, uh, beginning with verse 2 and 3. All right. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, live beyond the Euphrates River and worship other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. So first of all, when, when Joshua challenged the people of Israel to serve God, he reminded of he reminded them of all the things that God had done for them, including going back all the way to Abraham. He said that God took Abraham out 
and called him out to become a nation. Now, what does that mean? What's the big deal about you know, God calling Abraham? Here he reminded that Abraham served a different God. Okay? Abraham lived in a time or in a culture that was, uh, that was strongly influenced by the culture of the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel was a culture or a society that was living a life that was in rebellion to God. They make their own tower. They worship different gods. So meaning then is that Abraham and, his, this, uh, and his, um, uh, the people that lived together at the same time with him deserved a punishment or judgment from God. Just like the time, Genesis chapter 6, during the time of Noah. Okay? During the time of Noah, when God said, I am going to destroy the earth. So Abraham lived in a culture that was ungodly, served different kinds of God, that they deserve punishment. Abraham himself deserved punishment. But however, okay, God's grace, God's grace found Abraham and God's grace brought him out of that culture and gave him a new life. A new start. We are all the same. We are all in the same situation once upon a time together with Abraham. We were all sinners. We are still, we are still sinners. Every single one of the human or a person here on earth deserves punishment from God. But the grace of God brought us out and gave us a brand new life, a new start in life. So that's what uh, uh, Joshua is saying here. I brought and gave Abraham and your forefathers a brand new start in life by the grace of God. That's why he said, choose you this day. He challenged them. Choose you this day. Remember the, the, uh, our forefathers, Abraham, that it's the grace of God that brought him out. So the grace of God, again, gives us a second chance of, in life. It gives us uh, a new beginning in life. So that's something that, uh, that Joshua used to encourage the Israelites. He said, choose you this day. Remember the grace of God that brought you out of that situation. See, the only reason that you and I are still here today, it is because of the grace of God. Do you believe in that? Yes. yes. The only reason why we are still breathing, the only reason why we are still sitting down here and worshiping God, it is because of His grace and undeserved favor. So the next time you are, you are thinking of whether you serve God or not, remember the grace of God. Remember the grace of God. Remember his unmerited favor. We serve him because he gives us a second chance in life. Meaning you just have to be thankful to begin with. So remember, if you're in doubt and you are not, you are still thinking about whether you serve God or not, remember his grace. Remember his favor. And he reminded also Israel, that they were once in slavery in Egypt, and God took them out of Egypt to have a brand new start in life. That is why Joshua can say, choose for yourself today whether you will serve the God of Israel or the God of the Amorites. So number one reason, again, is because of the grace of God. Okay. Number one reason why we should serve the Lord is because we owe him a lot because of his grace. The second reason okay, why we should serve him is this, because of his blessings. 24, chapter 3 and 4. Can we say that? Okay. 
Let's, let's go back to this here. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. Next. And to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. So this is, this is the reminder that Joshua told the people. Abraham was an old man. He didn't have nothing left. Okay, he, was, he was already in his, uh, the last days of his life. But God said, I multiplied Abraham. I gave him blessings. And then he reminded, in verse 9 and 10, he reminded Israel, Verse 9 and 10. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and then I delivered you out of his hand. See, God is talking about here, or Joshua is reminding the people, that one of the reasons... Why we should serve God is because you have received blessings from Him. Not only that we receive grace and give us a second chance in life or a brand new uh, start in life, He said, not all, secondly, He said, He blessed us. Somebody was trying to put a curse on you, Balaam. But God said, I did not allow that to take place. I did not allow that to take place. See, we are all under a curse. See, when you are cursed, no matter what you do in life, it's not going to prosper. You're not going to receive blessings. But however, the Lord Jesus took that curse away from you. The Lord Jesus took that curse away from us because God said, as Joshua reminded the Israelites, I took the curse away from you and bless you instead. So, again, second reason why we should serve the Lord is that because we are receiving blessings from Him. Amen. His blessings is just so abundant. What scares me sometimes is that when we need something from the Lord, Man, we tell, we, we text everybody, right? If you're in trouble, if you need something from the Lord, you text everybody and your, your phone lights up like, pray for me. Okay, I need this. Pray for me, I'm sick. But the moment we receive the blessing, the moment the prayer is answered, we forget God. That scares me to death. Okay? Because we quickly forget God. We treat him like a soda machine. When, when we need something to, you know, we go over there and, you know, just push the button and, and then we walk away. That is not serving the Lord. Samuel said this, be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Consider what great things he has done for you. Serve him faithfully. So whenever we receive blessings from the Lord, remember that we need to serve him faithfully because of all the blessings that he received. If there are any people in this entire world that should be serving the Lord faithfully, we should be, that should be us here in America. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But yet, with all the blessings that we have here, we complain. No Wi-Fi, no slow. <laughs> right? No Wi-Fi is very slow, you know. We complain so much here in America. It's, it's too cold. There's a Bible study. It's too far. 
Again, if there's any, any people in this entire world that should be serving the Lord faithfully, based on the blessings that we receive, that should be us here. Not, but, you know, you, it's uh, sad to say it's the opposite. The people that does not have so much are the ones faithfully serving the Lord. Amen. That's a sad story. Now, the next thing that Joshua said, he said, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether you will serve the God of your forefathers on the other side of the Euphrates River or the God of the Amorites or the God, the Lord thy God. Here, Joshua gives us only two choices. There are two choices that Joshua gave. And that is, you serve God or you serve the God of your forefathers. The idols. What does that mean? It means simply this. It simply means that if you are not serving the living God, you are serving the other God. There's two choices. Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Do we have that? He said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Amen. So when Joshua said, you cannot serve, when he said, choose you this day, he's simply saying, you cannot serve two masters. So it's either one or the other. So what it means again is that if we are not serving God, Yahweh God, or the Lord Jesus Christ, or the living God, you are serving the other. It's a choice that you have to make. Is that hard to choose? No. So, let me repeat. Just so first of all said, the reason why we should be serving God is that, first of all, or because of His grace. Because of the grace of God. We deserve judgment. We deserve punishment. And the only reason why we are still here is because of the grace of God. That should be reason enough to serve Him. Amen. Secondly, it's because we receive blessings from Him. Yes. Blessings. He took away the curse. And then thirdly, he said, there's only two things. There's only two, two choices here. If you are not serving God, the living God, then you are serving the other gods. So which one are we serving? Is the question that we need to ask. The fourth, the fourth one is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. If we, if we can put that back. Romans chapter 4, uh, 12, verse 1. Therefore, he said, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's work. Okay? Service. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and Proper worship. You know, what our definition of worship nowadays is worship time. What is our definition of worship? We stand up and we sing. Right? And we raise our hands and, it, you know, and we praise God. Yes, that is a form of worship. But according to Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, 
It is when we serve God. It is not when we dance around. It is not when we jump around. It is not when we sing. It is not when, not when we raise our hands. Yes, it is a form of worship. But the true worship, according to Paul, is that is serving God. When we serve God faithfully, when we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, this is the true and proper worship. See? You want to worship the Lord? We want to worship God? It is more than just singing. And I'm, not, I'm not saying that you know, when we come to worship the Lord and we have a good music and we have good um, team here worshiping, I'm not saying that we're not worshiping God. It is a form of worship. But the deeper kind of worship that God is really looking is that when we serve him faithfully. Don't get mad at me. I'm just reading the word of God. Okay? It says, again, it says, this is your true and proper worship. Now, going back a little bit to Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Just as we choose you this day whom you will serve. It is a decision that you have to make. Sometimes we, we say that, well, <clears throat> I just wait for God to guide me. I'll wait for the Lord to tell me what to do with my life. No, you don't have to wait. You do not have to wait. Because the Bible clearly says that serve God. It is a decision that you have to make. It is not about waiting for the Lord where the Lord take you. It is a decision. Because again, God have already decided. You can find it all over the scripture. He, is, he already decided that we must serve him. What's left is for us to make that decision. That's what's left. It is no longer like, okay, Lord, you know, I'm still praying. It's already 20 years, but uh, I still do not know what should I be doing. Uh, it's already been 15 years, but uh, you haven't answered me. No, make that decision. Okay? When Joshua said, choose you this day, that is today, not tomorrow. You make that decision today. Do not wait for 20 years, for 30 years, or even one year. Choose you this day. That is why I made sure that we are following the, you know, what our, our uh, you know, what we call the win, train, send. Because I, I find out that, I found out that, you know, most, most really, you know, I've been a Christian for a long time, and I'm, what I observe but, is that there's no, there is no progress. Sometimes when it comes to serving in our worship, the Lord, there's, there's no progress. We are always learning. We're always learning. You know, I've, um, I've watched people to be being, going to a, a Sunday school for 20 years, and all the same thing. They're still learning. Remember what I told you one time? I went to, uh, I was invited to go to a church, and then. I went to their Sunday school, and it was an adult Sunday school. There were, there were, you know, when I say adult, they were like 60 and above. They had a good lesson that day. They were talking about tithing, about giving to the Lord. So they were like, you know, debating, like, you know, how do we should, we should do, do we give to God and about, you know, tithing. And so I was just listening. And finally, they asked me at the end, like, Pastor Phil, what do you think? You know what my answer? 
Say, we should stop talking about it and start doing about it. I mean, we cannot be learning and learning and learning all the time. Now, I'm not discouraging you to attend Bible study. That's very important. That's part of our spiritual growth. We learn Bible study, but if, for, if we have been sitting in the Sunday school or in the Bible study for five years, for ten years, and have done, done, not done nothing, <laughs> we've got to serve we have to serve. Now, I like, I, I like to close this with a story that's found in Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 50. In this story, you'll find two decisions represented. Okay? Two decisions represented here. This is about the woman that cried at Jesus' feet and wiped the feet of Jesus with her hair. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in the town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, Is this man, talking about Jesus, were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered, him. Can you imagine that? He was just saying to himself. She did not hear, he did not even say it out loud, but Jesus heard. Okay? Jesus heard exactly what he had in mind. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have someone to tell you, something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Now, in this story here, you will find that both the rich man, Simon, and the woman, as Jesus asked which they owed both money, and they were forgiven. You'll find here that both receive forgiveness or grace from God. Okay? Both of them receive grace from God. The rich man Simon and the sinful lady. Did they receive a blessing? Yes, both receive a blessing. Not Maybe not uh, the woman might not be as rich as Simon, but Simon received a blessing, and this woman received also a blessing. Okay, first they received forgiveness, they received grace of God. They both received blessing. The alabaster perfume is very expensive, so both have some kind of material blessing. But the difference between here, the two, is that 
Was the other one grateful? Who was grateful between these two? Jesus talked to Simon and said, Simon, you're just talking to yourself there, but I hear you what you say. I hear what you say. You want me to reject this woman and drive her away. And she said, you see this woman here? The moment I came in to your house, it was customary for them that it was the host's responsibility to wash the feet. They have servants of the guest. And to pour oil on the head of the visitor or the guest. But Simon did not. I said, do you see this woman here? The moment I came in, she has not stopped wiping my feet. And she wipe my feet with her hair. See, in this story here, two kinds of response are represented. The woman who received grace and blessing. Decided that when she heard that Jesus was coming into the house of Simon, they made a decision. Are you getting what I'm saying? She made a decision. And so was Simon made a decision. But the decisions that they made were two exactly opposite from the other. The decision that the woman made was that she went there and wiped the feet of Jesus. That was the work of or the responsibility of the host. Responsibility of the slave and the servant. But the woman who was not supposed to be the servant there, he was not supposed, she was not even welcome into that house. She made a decision. I am going there and do the work of a slave. I am going there to do the work of a servant. I am going to wipe the feet of Jesus. She received grace from God. She received blessing, but she decided to serve him. Simon, on the other hand, made the decision. I am going to invite Jesus but never for a moment occurred in his heart that he was going to serve him. He was like a leader, a Pharisee. He was like inviting Jesus because of his popularity and he wanted to take picture with Jesus. They just want to be identified with Jesus. Sometimes we have that attitude. We want to be identified with Jesus, but we don't want to serve him. We just want to take picture with him. It's like us, when every time we go to the Philippines, we take picture with Duterte's cut out cardboard. So everybody, everybody will, you know, when they take picture, they always go like this, right? <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you are, ident- you are serving the Lord. The question again today before us is, choose you this day who you will serve. It's a decision that you and I have to make.
because we have already received his grace, we have already received his blessings, and it is the proper way of worship. What is left is our response. Would you be the woman that did the work of a slave, wiped the feet of Jesus? Or we can be like Simon, who had a self-righteous attitude. I'm not going to. That's the work of the slave. Which one are we? Again, it is, no, it is not a question of whether God wants us to serve him or not, because it is uh, written all over. It's written all over. The word of God encourages us to serve him. And this is one way that we'll grow spiritually. When we are serving God, it is one way that we will grow spiritually. That is why you will see people that are serving God, they're on fire. That's what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Serving the Lord, keep your spiritual fervor. If we want to be on fire for God, then serve the Lord. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord, there is only one thing left when it comes to serving you. And that is, we have to make that decision. It is written all over your word. That serving you is a must. That serving you is a true kind of worship. The Lord, to serve you is an act of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to what you have done for us. Serving you, Lord, is means we are thankful that you have saved us from judgment because of your grace. Not only because of your grace, oh Lord, because also of your blessing. Your blessing comes in multiplication, not addition. We receive so much blessing from you, Lord. There is no reason. There, there is no single reason why we should not serve you. And so I pray, oh God, that today give us a heart heart of a servant a heart that doesn't hesitate to serve you get down on our knees to wipe your feet Lord I pray that we will not have the heart of silence He just invite Jesus because he want to be identified with him. He just want to take a picture with him. He just want the blessings but never want to serve. My prayer today, O oh Lord God, is that, Lord, open our eyes and make us see, O oh God, of what is it that you want us to do in our service for you. 
Lord, it does not have to be something that is so big. As a matter of fact, oh God, we do not have to go to other countries, to other far places to serve you. There is so much opportunity, oh God, for us here to serve you. If it's serving you, Lord, is to go out there, oh God, and, and win souls for your kingdom. Lord, we have our neighbors, we have our co-workers. We do not have to travel far. Lord, it does not have to be something that is so big. Lord, we can serve you even in small things. Help us to see, oh Lord, what it is, oh God, that you want us to do. Because, oh God, you're looking for people with a heart of a servant, willing to serve without hesitation. Give us that heart and open our eyes to see. Shall we all stand? Let's nice. worship the princess.
that we will really offer our lives unto you as a living sacrifice. Because this is the proper way to worship. Lord, if there's any hesitation, God, in serving you, help us to see, oh God. But Lord, you said, the way to be great is to serve. Give us a new heart. Open our eyes, Lord. Whatever it is that the Lord has been speaking to you, the way of serving Him, it's a decision that you and I have to make. Will you make that decision? According to Joshua, he said, choose you today whom you will serve. Today is the day of decision. And that's between you and the Lord. You have already experienced his grace. You have already experienced his blessings. to respond in thanksgiving by way 